What's going on everyone? This is Luke and welcome back to another FPL video. Finally, another FPL video that is. I know it's been a few weeks since I did my last one, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of catch up at the start, just showing you my progress over the coming weeks. That'll only take 30 seconds or so. I'm going to talk about some of the decisions I made and then I'm going to talk about the title of this video, five unpopular FPL opinions that I have and that's for game week five and sort of the week's that are going to proceed game week five as well. I'll probably throw another few things in the mix as well, so make sure you stay tuned and stay watching right through to the end. And if you do like this video, then hit that like button and let me know any thoughts or comments you have in the comments section down below. Let's get stuck into it. So as I say, it's been a few weeks since I did a video and I'm not exactly sure where I left off with you guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my game week two, three and four points. So this was my team in game week two, still had Ben Teke in the team at this point, and yes, that has been probably the worst decision I've made. It was interesting with Ben Teke, I picked him because he was getting so many chances last year. Last season, he actually had the highest number of expected goals difference between how many he didn't score. Like Salah scored way more than he should have, and Ben Teke scored way less than he should have. I thought that this year he couldn't possibly have so many chances and miss them all again. Well, it turns out he could, and I decided to ditch him pretty quickly. So at this point, I was doing okay. This was a, a fairly okay week. I got 78 points at that in game week two. Then game week three, I wild card at this point and got 57 points. I brought in Hamer in goal, who got injured straight away, so that wasn't great. But what I did do, I brought in Alonso, who's been very good. I swapped Van Dijk to Robertson, which has proved to be a very profitable decision. And there were a few other fairly decent selections in the mix as well. And you know what? I'm still pretty happy with that team. In fact, I've only made one transfer overall, excluding the wildcard to date. Although I will definitely be making at least one transfer this week. In game week four, I had another good week. I got 65 points. I've been over the average quite nicely every single week so far. I got the heart penalty saving goal, which was definitely the highlight of my week. I had only one player playing on the Sunday, and that was Joe Hart. A lot of people had Mkhitaryan playing. Obviously, he only came on in the 89th minute for one point, and I was expecting Mkhitaryan to massively outscore Joe Hart, who bagged 10 points with a penalty save and two bonus points as well. So that was a real positive day for me. Also got Ings in the mix with a goal, Mane with a goal, Captain Aguero who got an assist I think, Alonso again returning who's been phenomenal so far this season. And you can see my rank progression so far that I put up on Twitter at Beating Betting if you're not already following me. I was uh, 767k in the first week, then up to half a million, 361k, and now I'm up to 132k. Now this might not seem amazing, obviously it's not first where I want to be, but judging by my calculations, I should probably be first next week, judging by the amount of ranks that I've been increasing week on week. Obviously, that's just a bit of a joke, but you know, honestly, if you're within the top half a million after 10 game weeks, you have a really good chance of getting a good rank. It is not a sprint, it's a marathon, and it's all about staying in the mix. I'm very, very happy with where I'm based at the moment. I would prefer to be top, I'd prefer to be in the top 10, but it's comfortable. I'm really happy with how I'm doing, especially as I've not taken any points hits and I have used the wild card, which I didn't really want to do before the season. But when the time came, I was very happy that I did it and I've been happy ever since. I feel pretty comfortable with the fact that it's already gone. Let's talk about my five unpopular opinions now. And if you do disagree with them, that's fine. Make sure you let me know why you disagree with them in the comment section down below. And if you do agree with them, then hit that like button. The first one, I think Richarlison is massively overrated as an FPL pick. Well, I don't think he's a bad pick. I just definitely think he's overrated, as I say. Walcott has better underlying stats than him. I think that Walcott will outscore him as the season progresses, as long as he plays the same amount of minutes. Richarlison's only had four shots so far, three of them he scored. This is just massively unsustainable. And what I've seen a lot of people say who don't really know what they're talking about is they say, he's clinical, he's a clinical finisher. Well, yeah, that might be true. Yes, it might be good that he's finishing clinically, but it's not good that he's only had four shots. You need to make sure that your players are having a large number of chances so that they can actually return at a consistent rate. You know, three scoring three in every four shots just isn't sustainable long term. So I do like Richarlison, but I do think he's massively overrated. I certainly wouldn't be racing to get him back in and not waste a transfer on him at least. My second unpopular pick is forget Salah out. I'm debating Mane out. Mane has been great for me so far. I had him from game week one. He was still in my wildcard team, but he's massively outperforming his stats. He's shown over his career so far that he tends to score pretty close to his expected goals and expected assists. So at the moment, he's massively outperforming them and you would expect some regression. 
He's got three tricky fixtures coming up in his next four. There's also Champions League thrown into the mix as well. And I do not want to lose a player of Salah's class. He is top of expected goals, top of expected assists. He's doing really well. Yes, he's not finishing well, but his points are already higher than he had at this time last season. And I am definitely keeping hold of him. Now, here's something about Salah. And this was mainly meant to be about Mane, but I've got onto the Salah debate here. So this is something that I think many, many people have missed out on when they talk about the Salah out debate. Yes, he has three tough fixtures in his next four. And you're probably not going to want to captain him in those fixtures. I'm going to be captaining personally against Southampton in the middle and probably against Man City as well. There's a couple of tough fixtures that weekend. Uh, some of the other big sides are away and I'm probably going to captain him at home against Man City. We know that he can score against the big side, so that doesn't really phase me too much. So I'm going to be captaining him in two out of four games, probably. Things can change week by week, as we all know. There's also Champions League football in there, which mixes things up. But here's the thing that a lot of people are missing when they say... It's bad value to have a £13 million player that you're not captaining. That is absolutely true. You don't want a player in your side of that price that you're not going to be captaining week in, week out, or at least most weeks. But that's the point. I am going to be captaining him most weeks. Pretty much every single person that gets rid of Salah will want him back. A lot of people are doing this as a short-term move. Now, keeping a player of that price isn't good value if you're not going to captain him, but also using two transfers minimum to get him out and get him back in. That's also not good value, especially when you're gonna have other problems in your team, you're gonna have other areas to improve. That is not good value. So for me, I'm gonna be captaining him in one, maybe two of the four weeks, and I'm definitely keeping him, playing him every single time, because I'm going to captain him almost every other week of the season, bar any miraculous major changes in development, such as Aguero being definitely nailed to play every game, or some other situation where one of the other expensive players starts performing like a god, He's going to be my captain almost every single week. Mane, on the other hand, he's probably going to get rotated, and this point's probably gone on too long, but mainly I'm thinking Mane out for someone like Hazard could be a good move. I don't really mind losing out on Mane at this time. Unpopular point number three. Forget Salah out. Wait, I've already done this one. But I'm debating Robertson out. Now, Robertson has been one of the best point-scoring defenders so far. I've had him in my team for two weeks. been very, very happy with him. He's going to get a price rise this week as well, hopefully before I potentially get rid of him because if he goes up to 6.2, I can get 0.1 profit and sell him for someone else. Now, as I've already covered, Liverpool have some very difficult fixtures. I'm probably going to want to bench him in their, all three of their difficult fixtures. So this isn't ideal at all to have a 6.2 million defender on the bench. There are some other defenders that I've got my eye on. There's Luke Shaw, who obviously got concussion in the England match against Spain, so not 100% sure on him at the moment. There's also Laporte from Man City. I'm very tempted by him. He appears to be nailed on at 5.5. With the outfield players from Man City being rotated very, very heavily, it becomes tough to decide which one you want to go with. I currently have Bernardo Silva, who's a real problem. And my debate at the moment is, do I go to David Silva and get the more attacking threat? Or do I downgrade a defender to Laporte and then look to turn someone, um, and then look to turn Bernardo Silva into someone else? I can't quite afford the Hazard move, so there's going to be someone else around that price point that I can afford. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do, but I'm definitely debating Robertson out a lot more than I am debating Mane out at least. Unpopular opinion number four: James Madison. I'm not sold on him, not as an FPL pick anyway. I think he's a good player. I think he's got a lot of potential. I think he clearly has class. I think he'll do very well in the future. But right now, with Claude Puel as his manager, who is a defensively minded manager, he also likes to rotate his side quite a lot. I don't see him picking up loads of points. His stats are terrible. He's got very low expected goals, very low expected assists. His pick of the bunch so far is a completely fluked assist that he definitely didn't mean. And, you know, you could argue whether he should have even been credited for that. I don't see him scoring loads of points, and I could be wrong. This is the one where I'm probably most likely to be either very, very right or very, very wrong. He's got very easy fixtures coming up, so he could potentially score some points, but I'm not sold on him. His stats to me suggest that he's not going to return at a massive rate, so we'll wait and see on him. But even with Vardy back, Puel's play style, where Vardy likes to play on the counter, and Puel doesn't really play that sort of game, I just don't see Madison returning at a massive rate. Finally, my fifth unpopular opinion... Kante. Still not sold on Kante. I can't believe people are still bringing him into their sides. He's 22% owned. I ripped into him in one of my preseason videos and when he scored straight away, obviously he scored in the very first game. Everyone jumped on me in the comments laughing, saying, oh, what a brilliant decision that was on Kante. Well, 
What's he done since then? He's done fuck all. He's not scored. He's not assisted. He's been playing higher up the pitch. This is what everyone says. He's playing higher up the pitch. His heat maps show how much higher up the pitch he's playing. Yeah, but you're also forgetting that he's pretty shit when he gets higher up the pitch. He's good defensively. He's good at ticking over with possession, but he's not got a shot on him. He's not got a killer pass for an assist. He's a recycler of possession at best. And at worst, he's a defensive midfielder. His stats are terrible. I expected them to be. I'm not surprised at all. But I did just want to use this opportunity to gloat a little bit and show that, you know what? Maybe I was right all along. Other people say that he's going to be the top 5.0 point scorer. I disagree. I think some 5.0s and some 4.5s will outscore him. Will Hughes looks a very good pick at the moment in that lower 5 million range. And there are some others as well. But I think that's one for another video. I think that's about everything for this video this week. I probably will captain Aguero in his fixture of home against Fulham. And I've already spoken about my transfers a bit. I've got two free transfers in the bank. Not exactly sure where I'm going, but I'm thinking I'm going to downgrade Robertson to someone cheaper. And what I'll do with that money, I don't know. But it's Bernardo Silva who is on the chopping block and most at risk. I very much like Mitrovic, but I just can't fit him in my team at the moment. I've got Aguero, Ings and Arnautovic. Arnautovic probably the most likely to go, but I'm still happy with him a pick. He's the talisman of the side, and he's on penalties as well. I'm not going to waste a transfer on shipping him out, and I still think he's a solid option. The other slightly annoying thing I've got at the moment is Guendouzi. I put him in just as a 4.5 that was playing and was going to get a price rise. That was fine. I think he'll lose his place soon, and I don't really have the depth in midfield. I have a solid defence. I'm quite happy with Duffy as a backup defender at the moment. He's looking like he could get some attacking returns over the next six to ten weeks. That's the period I'm looking at with my backup defenders. Juan Bissaka as well. Everyone loved him now. I'm not really sure what the situation is there, but I'm sure everyone is loving his price still. I also have a bit of a dilemma with the keepers because I had Hamer who got injured straight away, so it's yet to be seen whether he will reclaim his place over Lursel. We'll have to see on that one. And Joe Hart. Very happy with him so far, but will he retain his place over Heaton? If he does, I can see him being the best value keeper in FPL this season. If he doesn't, I'm in trouble and I might have no keepers playing. If you have enjoyed this video, then make sure you hit that like button. It's very much appreciated. And if you could let me know your thoughts in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you. I get back to as many of you as I can. So yeah, drop a thought in the comment section down below. If you still haven't subscribed and you want to see more from me, whether that be Fantasy Premier League, betting and gambling stuff, poker, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you again in another video. Thank you very much for watching.